Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished almost, we are almost finished solving all the math problem from this book. If there is any problem that gives you trouble, you will find a solution to it from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. The book, this book here, the second edition, contains almost all the same problems and in most cases on the exact same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are done solving all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be a little lengthier and a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions from this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. The quant quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still a big part of the exam, the revised, revised GRE. It's just that the other two books do not provide us enough practice questions. So to get some extra practice, we started solving this problem from day number 401. We are on page number 242 right now, question number 14. Let's take a look at it. Number 14, as always, I remind you every time, when I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, as soon as I finish setting up the problem, even if I don't say it, even if I don't stop at that point myself, if I forget to stop, you should get in the habit of pausing the video yourself solve the problem yourself before you continue watching the solution you will get more out of it that way you understand here's the problem problem number 14 when it was given in the exam in the real exam only 23 percent of the people got it right three quarters of the people missed it here's what it says it says for all for all numbers for all numbers n we are told that n with an x strict on the top n star is 32 minus n in column A, in column A we have n star star and in column B we have n. And that is all they tell you. Since this is all they tell you, this, then I cannot say anything more than that. I'm going to shut up now. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. I want you to solve this problem yourself and then we'll do it together, okay? All right. The quickest, the simplest, the most economical way of ta tackling this question is to simply plug in number for n. Just plug in some value for n and see what happens. For example, we can pretend that n is equal to 10. Let's plug in n equal to 10 here and see what happens. But before we do that, we have to first understand what this, what this is saying here. This, this actually is an instruction. It is telling us what to do. What it tells us, what it tells us is that in plain English language, in plain English language, what this tells us is that. If you were to find a quantity, any quantity at all, any quantity at all, with a star on the top of it, what are we to do? We are to subtract that quantity from 32. That's all. Whatever it is that we see on the, uh, with the star on top of it, any quantity with the star on top of it, take that quantity and subtract 30, uh, from 32. That's all. So take that quantity and subtract it from 32. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So our n here is 10. So that's what we're going to do. So, so 10 star, 10 star means we take our 10 and we subtract it from 32. And that becomes 22. But that's not it. Now we have a star on top of that. So let me rewrite it a little bit better. So n, n, 10 star means 32, 32 minus 10. And now we have a star outside. This quantity we know is 22. This, this quantity we know is 22. So it's 22 star now. And what do we do? Same exact thing as before. We go our second round. We take that quantity and subtract that from 32. So if we take that quantity and subtract it from 32, what do we end up with? We end up with what we started out with. We start out, we start out with n equal to 10, and that's exactly what we end up with. So n star star turns out to be, turns out that it is same as n star, the answer is C. Now if you want a piece of mind, if you want a piece of mind, you could try it one more time with a different number and see what happens. Let's plug in something else. Let's, let's try two this time. Let's try two. Okay, should I erase everything or should I just keep everything? Let's let's try two. I'm going to erase everything. 
Now we're going to try with 2. Let's, let's pretend that n is equal to 2. In which case n star would simply be 32 minus 2, which is 30. That part is done. And now we have a star outside. So we put a star outside. And now it's 32 minus 2 with a star on top, which is same as 30 star, because 32 minus 2 is 30. And now we have to figure out 30 star, which is simply 32 minus whatever we see in the, in, uh, on the star, which is 30, which is 2, which is the same thing as exactly what we started out with. So this is one way of doing it. This is one way of doing it by simply plugging in numbers. You can, you can try plugging in any number that you want. You can pl plug in you know, negative numbers, you can plug in fraction, you can plug in anything you want and you will see that always we finish with what we started out with. So that's one way of doing it, by plugging in numbers. Another way to do this problem, another way to tackle this problem is to solve this thing in an abstract manner with algebra. And that can be done as well. Let's do it that way. Let's do it with the algebra now, okay? Instead of plugging in numbers, let's do algebra. Let's do it algebraically. Where can we do it? Let's do it right here. So, n star means, n star, this quantity here, n star means, n star means n minus 32. Now well, that part is very simple. They tell you that n star equals 32 minus n. Now n star star, n star star means you take the quantity and you put a star on top of it. And what, what are we supposed to do with it? Well, you're supposed to take the quantity right here. If you put, we put a star on top of it, which means this quantity now has a star on top of it. So we take the quantity, whatever we see in the in the, in, uh, in, the, in the parentheses here, and we subtract the quantity from 32. Here is our 32, and we're going to subtract from it whatever it is that we see here, which is n minus 32. And when we do that, what we find is that we get 32 minus and a minus will become minus n. Something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong drastically. Ah, I made a mistake. It is not n minus 32, it is 32 minus n. It is not n star is, is 32 minus n, not n minus 32. 32 minus n. So when we open the parenthesis, we'll have 32 minus a 32, 32 minus a 32, and then negative and negative will become positive and we'll end up with positive n, and this cancels out. We, 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 we finish, we end up with what we started with. We started with n, and we finished with n. So these two quantities are equal. n star star equals n, n star star equals n, and this is n, so therefore n equals n, the answer is c. Let's move on to the next one, number 15. Number 15, the last one in the series, on that page. Again, when I set up the problem, pause the video. Number 15, it was 47%. A little over half the people got it wrong. We are told that Q and T are midpoints, are midpoints of opposite sides, opposite sides of a square P R S U. So P and Q we are told, rather Q and T we are told, Q and T uh, midpoints of the opposite side of a square P R S U. So let's draw our square here that is given to us. The square looks like this. And here's our square P R S U. And Q and T are the midpoints of the opposite sides of a square. And they show it here in the picture. Right? There is your Q and here is our T. So those are the midpoints, which means if they're midpoints, which means this distance same as that distance, and so on and so forth. And then they go on to give us two more lines here. And they tell us that this is root 5. They tell us that q, they tell us that q to s is root 5. I'm taking too long here. Here's what they're telling us to compare. Column A, we have area of the region P, Q, S, T, and in column B we have three halves. They want us to compare the area of the region P, Q, S, T, P, Q, S, T, this region right here, area of this region, 
compared to 3 over 2. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to give you time to solve the problem yourself. Pause, pause and unpause the video. I'll give you 5 seconds to do just that and then we'll do it together. Alright. There are two ways. There are two ways going about this problem. One way actually if you if you're conversant in geometry. If you're conversant in geometry, you will recognize that if it's root five, if this is root five, then if you look at if this is root five, then so is this guy. This side is root five. And this side is two times this side. PU equals two times TU because T is a midpoint. I shouldn't have put these dashes here because dashes they signify that they are equal. P to U is two times is two times T to U. And if you converse any geometry, you recognize that in this triangle, in this triangle, P, P, T, P, T, U, you may recognize right away by looking at the fact that this is root 5, by looking at the fact that this is root 5, you might recognize right away that this side has to be 1 and this side has to be 2. Why? Why? Because this is a right angle triangle here. This is, this is, this is a square, which means it's 90 degrees. So in this triangle here, simple application of Pythagorean theorem tells us that 1 squared plus 2 squared, 1 squared plus 2 squared has to be equal to the square of this quantity, square of root 5 squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, as you can see 5 equals 5. That's what it is. But if you did not see that, if you, did, if you were not able to see that right away, that this side has to be 1 and this side has to be 2, it's not a big deal, we can solve for it. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to pretend that we do not know that. We're going to pretend that we do not know that, and if we didn't see it, if we didn't know that right away, if by looking at it simply, if by simply making, by, by simple visual inspection, if you were unable to tell that this side has to be 1 and this side has to be 2, in that event, the cost that you have to bear is that you're going to have to spend an ex extra 10 seconds to do it out. So we're going to do it out. So let's pretend that this side is x and this side is 2x because it's twice as long. So now we know that the square of the hypotenuse, there's two, there's two a squared, a squared, which in this case is x squared, a squared plus b squared, which is 2x squared, it has to equal c squared. c squared is this. Are you with me? Square of square of 5 is just 5. And then square square x squared plus 2x squared is 3x squared ah something has gone wrong something has gone wrong because I made a mistake here see this this is this this should have been a squared plus b squared I wasn't paying attention a squared plus b squared and this is your b this is your b this is your a so a squared plus b squared this is plus b squared and that gives you 5x squared and therefore 5x squared equals 5 that implies that x squared equals 1 and that in turn implies that x must equal positive or negative 1 obviously we're not interested in the negative root because we're talking about the length of the side so x must be positive 1 so this side is 1 and this side is 2. Are you with me so far? I'm taking way too long, but that's it. That's where, that's where we are. Let's, do, let's finish it up here. And now we have to figure out, now we have to figure out the area of the shaded region. In order to figure out the area of the shaded region, that's very straightforward. Let's figure out the area of the triangle PTU. Area of the triangle PTU is simply one half base, which is 2, times height, which is 1. So 2 cancels out and the and the area of the triangle PTU is just 1. Are you with, still with me? And then at the end all we have to simply realize is that this square the way it is drawn here this square the way it is drawn here it is made up of four identical triangles. One triangle right here another triangle right here another triangle right here and another triangle right here these are four identical triangles with equal areas. We just found we just found out the area of one of those triangles, P, P, T, U, is 1. If the area of one of the triangles is 1, then the shaded portion that we are interested in is made up of two of those four triangles. It is made up of two of those four triangles, which means the area of the shaded region must equal 2. 
So we're comparing 2 versus 3 over 2. Of course, 2 is more than 3 over 2. The answer is A. The answer is A. That's all. In column A, in column A, we have area of the triangle, area of the triangle, area of the area of the area of the region PQST, PQST, which we just found out is two, which is more than three halves, which is our column B. The answer is A. You understand? Before I completely forget it and I close the video and then end up erasing the word, let's learn this word here. And then I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the word one more time in in the in context so that you can see how it was used. The word was conversant. What does it mean to be conversant? I know we covered it. I know for a fact that we learned it long time ago. I'm looking at the, my list of the word here in the vocabulary part. And if you if you just give me one second, I'll find it. Conversant. Oh, very good. Day number three. What do you know? Vocabulary day three. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day three, and watch that video. And there you will, there you will see that we learned the word conversant, which just means to be skilled at something. To be conversant at something means to be very good at something, to be very skilled at something. And huh, this is how we use the word in the context. What we said is that. What we said about five minutes ago is that if you're conversant in geometry, if you're good in geometry, if you're good at geometry, if you are skilled in geometry, then you might recognize it. If you're conversant in geometry, you might recognize right away that if this is root five and this side is twice as much as that side, then that side would have to be one and this side would have to be two because one squared plus two squared equals five. Or to be more precise, one squared equals one squared plus two squared equals square of five root five right here. 1 squared, 1 squared plus 2 squared equals the square of the third side, which is root 5. And some people might actually see that right away. If this is root 5, then this would have to be 1 and this would have to be 2. And if this is 1 and this is 2, then the area of this triangle, PTU, is simply 1 half base times height, which is 1. And therefore, since there are 4 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, since there are 4 identical triangles, the area of the shaded region must be 1 plus 1, 2, which is more than 3 halves. So depending on how skilled you are, depending on how, how you are able to how quickly you are able to see things, this question should not take more than a few seconds, even though in the video it ends up taking 10 minutes, you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.